I have got over 10 years worth of experience using wax-based chain lubricants, and over those years, I've tried most of the different products that are out there. Some are brilliant, some are crazy expensive, some will actually save you money, and some are just total crap. So in this video, I want to highlight the good, the bad, and the ugly truth behind my fixation with chain waxing, and also explain why even though it's brilliant, some people just still aren't convinced. What chain waxing might seem like a fairly new concept, is not. It was first used by cyclists in the late 19th century as they looked for a way to reduce friction of their chains, protect it from rust, and act as a method of lubrication. Paraffin wax was easily available and affordable. But since then, waxing a chain has gone relatively under the radar for most mainstream cyclists. There have now been new products emerging with lots of different options to choose from. Now, my experience of chain waxing comes from a nerdy cyclist perspective. It's something I was doing when I was racing as a professional and something that I still do now as a keen amateur cyclist. Now, I'm not a scientist, nor am I a materials expert, but I do have an understanding of what works, and my knowledge and understanding of chain waxing has evolved through trial and error to allow me to decide what kind of products I like using and what kind of products I will try to avoid. So where did this all start? Well, for me, it started with a little bottle of watery liquid that had wax particles suspended in it. If you had the bottle standing still for five minutes, all of the wax particles sunk to the bottom and you had to give it a really good shake to kind of like activate the liquid. And then when you applied it onto the bike, the liquid was really only acting as a carrier to get those solid wax particles onto the chain. And then when you did apply it, it kind of went everywhere and you were left with a watery mess all over your bike. The idea and concept behind it was that the fast evaporating liquid would just leave the wax particles in the areas that you wanted. But in reality, you really ended up with not much wax on the chain and it was pretty much impossible to get the wax exactly where you wanted it. And then through normal use and application, well, the end of the nozzle would quickly block up as well. And nobody needs a blocked nozzle. And when you were out riding, the chain was immediately noisy. The packaging promised a clean chain and whilst it did deliver on that, you also had a chain which was basically running with minimal lubrication and maximal noise. Not exactly what's most desirable. Now. I won't name and shame any products in this video, but that type of product is one that I would try to avoid, and is something that is completely different to the type of wax emulsions that modern chain lubricants can be made using today. Now for a while, that left me going back to the tried and tested oil-based lubricants, applying it onto my chain, and then after every few rides and the chain turned into a black gunky mess, simply degreasing it and start from scratch again. And then a few years passed by, we had more new shiny products in more new shiny packaging. One of those being this kind of thing, which was a little soft wax puck. The idea here being that you simply got your wax puck, which was available in loads of different colors, and you rubbed it like this, onto the outside of your chain. Not only did it give you a cool way to customize your chain and give it a different color, it was kind of fairly ineffective acting as a chain lubricant. Yes, you ended up with lots of wax on your chain, but pretty much none of it actually made its way inside the chain to where you actually wanted to reduce the friction. I tried lots of different versions of these and had pretty much zero success with any of it other than making your chain a pretty cool color. Now, products like this in modern day times, and when you speak to experts in this field now, they'll say that using a color in the wax and also a scent is generally not great for maximal performance because you're taking something out of the wax which could be used for performance and replacing it with a color and a scent. I even tried applying the wax like this and then heating the chain up to try and melt the wax deep into the center of it. And whilst it made it slightly better, it wasn't really that successful. So it was back to oil-based lubricants yet again. And then a few years later down the line, when I was racing on the road as a professional cyclist, a few of my teammates were like, hey, have you heard about this radical new thing we can do? You wear your wax, your chain, and it's gonna save you like a million watts and basically gonna mean we go and win every single race. Well, no, I hadn't heard about it, but it was a brilliant idea. They explained how you basically had a pot of hot wax, you dunked your chain in, and then the liquidy wax would flow into all of the different areas of your chain. You'd remove the chain, 
and it would cool and then your chain was encased in this wax substance which basically reduced the friction, meant dirt would repel from it, and then you had a speedy fast chain. So I did what any ordinary person would do, which was not in any way to question the 1 million watt savings and head straight to Amazon and buy a little wax heating kit which came with some wax in the pot as well. Now there's one downside here because when I did get that and rushed to immediately set it up, I mounted the wax and it turns out I'd basically bought a little beauty wax kit which had wax suitable for waxing armpits, legs and bikini lines and wasn't really great for waxing your chain. So when I removed my chain from my little wax heater, it was a big gooey mess that dried into a concrete-like wax and was pretty much rendered the chain useless. So it's back to square one again. So it turns out the cyclists of the 19th century had a far superior bike knowledge than what I do now. Never mind, day. Eh? And it turns out that paraffin wax was actually what you needed. Now paraffin wax is pretty much what acts as the main base for most modern hot melt wax systems, such as this one here. But what you don't have in paraffin wax is the fancy additives that premium hot melt wax lubricants have in them. So for example here we've got nanoscale tungsten dull So for instance here we've got nanoscale tungsten disulfide particles added in here. Now Paraffin wax can be bought very easily online. You can get a kilogram bag for about 10 pounds. Now a kilogram of paraffin wax is gonna last you a very long time. And is also gonna attract far less dirt to it than an oil-based chain lubricant and will make your chain last a little bit longer as well. Using paraffin wax, which is the same stuff as what candles are made from, was cheap and effective, but it was a bit of a faff having to heat the wax up, take the chain off the bike, dunk it in, let it set, then you had to have somewhere to store your little wax pot and heater and kit. And whilst it wasn't a big deal, it was far more involved process than simply applying some oil onto your chain and giving it a degrease every now and again. Which led me to use the product which I feel really changed chain waxing for me and people in general, and that is a drip on wax emulsion lubricant, such as this. There are, of course, lots of different options out there. Wax emulsions like this are brilliant because they can be applied whilst the chain is still on the bike. You simply drop it onto each of the rollers and because it's a liquid, it flows into all of the little gaps where you need the wax on the lubrication to be. You then leave it overnight to set, cure, dry, and you're ready to go. Now in my experience, this removes a lot of the hassle and faff that's involved with chain waxing and really simplifies it. I would say it's important to make sure you let it dry, otherwise you're not gonna get the advantages of using this product. But it does give you almost all of the advantages of using a hot melt wax system with far, far less hassle. Now in my experience of using drip on wax lubricants, typically they don't last quite as long as a hot melt wax system, but the simplicity for application and cleaning without having to take the chain off the bike is well worth that small trade-off. In my experience, I find that you'd have to apply this every couple of rides, and if you're riding in the wet, well, it's gonna have to be done after every single ride. But application is really simple. If your chain is a bit dirty, take a dry cloth, wipe it all over, and then reapply your wax emulsion. And if you wanna go for a deep clean on your bike, well, this is one of the advantages of using wax, is that you don't have to have a degreaser. To remove all of the wax off of your chain, you can simply pour hot water off it and all the wax will simply melt away. Wax emulsions like this one are what I would really suggest people go out and try if they're feeling somewhat wax curious because there's a low cost, the initial setup is simple, and the application is as easy as it gets. So there you go, that is the quickest summary I could give of my chain waxing experience over the best part of 10 years, which kind of leads us onto the question of, if those are all the advantages that are possible to have, why is it some people still aren't waxing their chains? Well. I think there's the age old question of a lot of people just really don't care and they wanna just have the simplest option out there. They wanna use the method and the products and the processes that they've done ever since they've had their bike and switching to something new, as I've already explained, can be costly but also maybe a daunting process too. 
I would say, although I'm very much aware of all the advantages, and as a tech nerd, I'm happy to spend extra time doing all these little intricate details, most people just want to have the simple option which doesn't involve any forward planning. They want to jump on their bike and go and ride it. Now, at the start of this video, I said I would discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, the ugly one is quite tricky here, but for me, I think it's the fact that there are so many different products out there that it's hard to know which ones are great and which ones are pretty rubbish. But luckily, there are independent people and places conducting lots of testing to give you valuable information. One of those places is Adam at Zero Friction Cycling, which is a great point of call to get independent test data. There's also the fact that it is very difficult, if not impossible, as an end user to actually quantify if waxing your chain has extended the life of your chain or if it's even made your chain last longer at all. Even after spending all that time, effort and money getting all the waxing equipment and setup to try to make your chain last longer. And that, for me, is one of the biggest downsides along with the time involved. Now, as a cycling nerd, I love all of this stuff and I can appreciate the fact there's all the independent test data to prove that it's faster, but I can also understand that some people just wanna go out, ride their bikes and have the simplest setup possible. And in that case, applying some oil onto your chain and just degreasing it now again is probably the way to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bit of an obscure way of looking at chain waxing over the last 10 years, but it was fun nonetheless. Please do get involved in the comments section down below and let me know your thoughts on chain waxing and chain oils and your experiences. Are you team oil or are you team wax? And let me know your reasoning why. And if you want to see more cool bike tech related videos, subscribe to GCN Tech and turn on your notifications. It's enough chain wax talk for one video. I'm out of here. Bye.